Our first speaker this morning is Dr. Murat Kachira, who's a professor in the Agriculture and Biosystems Engineering Department, and my colleague there here at the University of Arizona, who's going to start off speaking about greenhouse structures and glazings, and um, we'll uh, save questions until the 9.30, 9.45, unless there's some burning questions that they might ask. Murat, All right, Jim, please. You. you can stay there. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Gene. Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I believe we are missing a few of you, so maybe later we'll see them coming and joining us. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning, and um, I'm going to uh, talk about greenhouse structures and, and glazing and go through some of the fundamentals and have a brief discussion with you. Uh, before we start, though, uh, is there anyone from North Carolina here? If you are out there, we are jealous of you, and congratulations for the game. It was, it was good. Um, all right. So uh, may I take this off? I think. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. So uh, why do we uh, want to grow in greenhouses? So uh, there are a couple of reasons we grow food in greenhouses, because the greenhouses provide um, improved independence from outside climate. So we can control the climate for crop production. We can use um, unproductive land for food production. And we can be more efficient in terms of using the resources. Uh, for example, when it comes to water, we can be 10 times more resource use efficient compared to food production and field uh, environment, field conditions. The pests and disease we can control them efficiently in, in, in greenhouse conditions. Also, greenhouse production brings uh, societal effects to their benefits. Uh, steady and year-round jobs, we can generate considerable amount of uh, production as well as uh, income. Um, there are several uh, factors uh, that must be considered when it comes to selecting a structure or a design with uh, greenhouse systems, and I kind of listed them here for you, uh, market size, the infrastructure in the region, is especially, you know, it, climate is an important factor. Most importantly, the plant requirements, the focus should be always on the plant too. So the plant uh, selection makes a difference in, the, in terms of design and structure and the technology. The cost of land, the material, equipment, services, availability, Dependable labor, very important, and the level of education and training for the labor used in greenhouses is really some of, one of the key factors. And also uh, rules, regulations uh, uh, in the region, the supporting infrastructure, transportation, and the, of course the investment, the economics. These are some of the major uh, factors that we consider selecting greenhouse designs and structure. Uh, in addition to those, um, the expected production quantity and quality also plays play a major role uh, in selecting greenhouse technology and the design. Um, we should look uh, for the, the knowledge of the grower to provide the desired conditions for the, uh, for the, uh, for the plant in the greenhouse. Um, at the end, uh, we should be really uh, looking for a balance, a reasonable balance that can be maintained or established with the market demand, the quality of the production um, meeting the market demand, the grower skills, the expected economic return, and the level of greenhouse technology selected for the crop production. These should be balanced when it comes to making these uh, uh, selections. There are <clears throat> few uh, differences in terms of greenhouse designs. Uh, and it can be as simple as a standalone, a single bay uh, greenhouse system, or it can be a multi-bay, uh, multi-span greenhouse or gutter-connected greenhouse. Um, these are a simple uh, classification for greenhouse designs. Uh, they can be attached next to a building, or it can be a freestand, freestanding greenhouse uh, with different uh, roof or span structure or a gutter connected uh, greenhouse. So in terms of attached greenhouse, these are greenhouses basically next to a greenhouse uh, supporting the uh, main frame. So they're called lean-to greenhouses or a freestanding greenhouse such as uh, with 
this one here with even uh, span uh, uh, style, two slopes with equal uh, uh, pitch and width, or it can be uh, an uneven uh, span greenhouse, for example, with unequal uh, width uh, or pitch. And these uh, uneven span greenhouses, for example, can be used for uh, locations where there's a slope, so they are adjustable to the slopes, but they are not very common uh, when it comes to commercial uh, production. Um, a freestanding greenhouse, uh, for example, a concept greenhouse, can be uh, uh, designed or can be used uh, in a way that if it is low, um, if it is built low, uh, with a low height, it can be used for nursery applications or it can be a high tunnel greenhouse for vegetable uh, production. Um, mostly plastic is used, but they're also adaptable for rigid and flexible uh, uh, glazing uh, as an alternative. Uh, concept greenhouses uh, does not provide a, a, a space for storage or for working uh, inside these uh, structures, but they can be built on poles to increase the height to grow uh, also tall crops. Uh, another form of uh, concept greenhouse, because of the roof uh, uh, shape or uh, uh, structure here, it's called Gothic or arc, uh, arc greenhouse. Uh, this type of greenhouse uh, provides more head space, a more height uh, to grow and to work uh, uh, during the production, and it can also help preventing snow buildup if the greenhouse is located in, in um, uh, in locations in colder climates where uh, snow might be an issue. Um, a pre-standing greenhouse, uh, for example, could be an A-frame greenhouse, a large greenhouse with A-frame uh, structure. Um, reach furrow greenhouses, these are um, even span, multiple bays uh, connected to each other without the uh, common wall inside uh, removed. Uh, what uh, this allows for a larger space to grow the, uh, the crop, a common environment is shared with common climate control uh, systems. It, 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 another uh, form or design of a um, gutter connected greenhouse is called what is called a Ventof or a Dutch uh, greenhouse. These uh, greenhouses uh, have a narrow um, gable end as you can see here and um, uh, this design allows uh, for thinner bars to, uh, used in the in the structure. Um, the design also uh, allows to uh, for use of uh, large sheets of glass on the roof for uh, high light transmission and reducing shading. Um, and also uh, because of the uh, the structure, the the tilt or the pitch, it it, it provides uh, higher light transmission especially during if, uh, when there's a, uh, an issue or limitation uh, for the light transmission uh, 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 during the winter uh, in locations, this might be, if this is a uh, limiting factor. Um, single or gutter connected greenhouses, so how you make a decision on that. Uh, from the energy conservation point of view, if you're going to grow in large areas, it makes more uh, sense and uh, provides more savings, energy savings, if we go with gutter-connected greenhouses, uh, because when you have gutter-connected greenhouses, the, uh, the amount of wall surfaces for heat loss uh, is much uh, reduced, and the, the wall surface area relative to floor area is, um, is, um, uh, uh, is less. So, this provides us more uh, energy savings. Uh, the advantage with gutter connected greenhouses, uh, it allows for future expansion. So you can grow in a much larger space. Space is used again with uh, the common climate control, uh, uh, common control, uh, common climate control uh, system. This is a, another uh, design or structure uh, uh, type of a rich fur of uh, greenhouse, uh, what is called an open roof or cabrio. A greenhouse uh, providing much higher ventilation rates. If the outside condition is favorable, um, um, you can use this type of greenhouse, for example, during spring uh, for, for hardening of the plants. 
uh, and also it helps uh, reducing the labor to move plants from the greenhouse to outside and back and forth. Um, uh, you can control the greenhouse climate within a couple of degrees of the outside climate. Uh, however, uh, the high wind, if there's a high wind or rain uh, uh, situation, it, these may prevent roof opening for greenhouse cooling or, or venting uh, processes. So maybe uh, having a side vent in this type of greenhouse could uh, help uh, managing the climate better under those conditions. Another uh, type of uh, greenhouse design is a retractable roof greenhouse. These are uh, usually constructed as a flat uh, roof or A-frame type of uh, structures. Uh, this could be used as a stationary or retractable uh, insect strings or shade uh, curtains. With shade curtains, um, uh, you can provide a complete or partial uh, shading uh, for the crop. Uh, high ventilation rates and more light is possible. Uh, however, uh, uh, we cannot achieve a tight climate control uh, with these, within these type of structures. It's mostly used for basic uh, protection of the crops. So these are a few uh, alternative designs and structures to consider depending on the production, depending on the crop uh, that is uh, considered. So I'm going to kind of uh, focus on light and glazing. Uh, these are the main factors affecting plant growth. The light, air temperature, relative humidity, carbon dioxide, air speed and pollutants in the environment, and also the climate or environment in the root zone. So my talk is going to focus on the light because of the glazing. Um, when the light uh, penetrates into the greenhouse, it certainly affects plant uh, activities, plant physiological activities, for example, the transpiration, how the water is transported from the root through the plant to the atmosphere, as well as the light capture uh, and, and its use for uh, photosynthesis. Then the plant may transpire uh, the water into the atmosphere, contributing to the, uh, the water content in the air, then you have the humid, you may have a humid conditions, then that humidity must be removed from the greenhouse through ventilation, and that affects other processes, the way the CO2 is removed from outside, for example, to inside or from inside to outside, um, and cooling and heating processes. So light it has a major effect in the environment for plant as well as for the greenhouse uh, climate. And when it comes to light, yesterday Merle was talking about uh, different light uh, conditions or availability in different parts of the world and some regions are favorable, favored uh, in this uh, case and some uh, not. For example, here if you look at this is the uh, daily light integral map of, uh, of the U.S. So the daily light integral is basically the amount of, total amount of uh, uh, photons that comes in a certain wavelength in the photosynthetic active radiation for, uh, in the 400 to uh, 700 nanometer range uh, for a 24 hour period. And it's, a, it's an important variable to consider when it comes to uh, light for plant production. So in the case of Tucson, for example, from January to uh, July to summer, as you can see, we range from 20, 25 moles of light per area per day basis up to 55, 60, 70 uh, average DLI levels versus somewhere in Michigan and Ohio. Uh, it can be as low as 5 to 10 up to uh, 40, 45 moles per meter square per day basis. So depending on what kind of crop is selected, there might be conditions and times where the, the operator or grower might need supplemental lighting to manage to optimize the growth uh, for that crop being grown. In the, in the greenhouse uh, conditions. Tucson is, is, uh, is a good location. Uh, we have uh, plenty of sunshine uh, to grow crops uh, where you need high uh, DLIs, for example. Um, so the requirements uh, from the glazing material, there are some requirements that we would like to see uh, when it comes to selecting a greenhouse glazing. Certainly the first one is the high light transmission. Uh, the light intensity. We would like to see high light transmission uh, and achieve high uh, daily light integrals. 
as a rule of thumb, 1% um, more light means 1% more uh, yield. The, in addition to light intensity, the light quality, the spectrum of light is also important for uh, plant production because it affects, it can affect certain uh, processes, the morphology, the, the nutritional value. So depending on the objective and the application, the light quality may play an important role. The um, thermal characteristics of the glazing, uh, the optimum heat inputs, for example, lower heat losses uh, during the nighttime or during the cold uh, periods. A high mechanical resistance, the durability of the glazing material is important. Uh, the condensation behavior, we, we don't want to see uh, dripping of water from the uh, glazing uh, uh, in the greenhouse. The uh, sensitivity, sensitivity for aging, uh, some of these uh, materials might be degrading uh, depending on uh, the, the age, the temperature, the climate, uh, and all of the chemicals used in the environment or the contaminant. So these are factors that are really, uh, that can make a difference or that, that should be considered to make a decision when it comes to uh, gla greenhouse glazing. Also the manufacturing size, what is the size availability? How can you uh, fit that into the, uh, the technology selected or the structure selected? Of course, at the end, the cost is also a factor uh, for the greenhouse uh, glazing. So um, greenhouse glazing will uh, affect light transmission. Uh, however, the, uh, the greenhouse location, the local climate, the time of the year, the greenhouse glazing material will affect light transmission. The structural components um, will affect light transmission. Also the greenhouse orientation will affect how much light is penetrating into the uh, greenhouse and becoming available the, uh, for the plant uh, canopy. There are a few uh, choices that you can consider. Um, glass or plastic, uh, rigid plastic panels or flexible films, uh, single layer or double layer, which one to use. Uh, uh, the glazing might have some uh, special treatments and ed additives to, uh, for improving uh, some of the properties and also uh, the crop being selected uh, is uh, going to be a factor uh, to make a choice with the glazing. So I want to briefly touch on the radiation since we're talking about the light. Uh, some terminologies I believe uh, uh, you will, we will have more in-depth discussion of these um, uh, later on. Uh, in terms of solar radiation, there are certain uh, wavelengths that are important for plant production. Um, the UV radiation, 300 to 400 nanometer, in, it's usually, it's generally detrimental and negative effects from the plants, but if, it's, if it is used strategically, uh, it can have effects uh, on the plant morphology as well as the, the phytochemicals uh, for the plant. Uh, this is an important uh, spectrum for, for plants, photosynthetic active radiation from 400 to 700 nanometers. It is needed for photosynthesis and also it has effects on plant morph uh, morphogenesis. Far red light in this range, effective on plant morphology. And near infrared light, 800 to 2500 nanometer, uh, which can increase crop as well as greenhouse temperatures and far infrared light uh, beyond a 2.5 uh, 25 nanometer uh, range. Uh, so th these are important wavelengths to consider when it comes to light. These spectrums, these ranges actually providing the energy input to the greenhouse while the far infrared radiation can be important factor in terms of the energy lost from the greenhouse, especially at night or during the cold uh, periods. The light is very dynamic in the, in the greenhouse environment. The way it penetrates, the way it is uh, traveling in the greenhouse system. For example, the long wave radiation can be reflected from the greenhouse, as you can see, uh, reflected as a long wave infrared radiation, or the, um, the short wave radiation <clears throat> can penetrate, can be transmitted into the greenhouse, and can be absorbed as short wavelength infrared radiation 
it can be re-emitted as long wave radiation and trapped in the greenhouse, as a greenhouse effect. And we have visible light, it can penetrate into the greenhouse and it can be reflected as a visible light and leaving the greenhouse space. So the greenhouse glazing selected makes a difference in terms of the dynamics and the internal dynamics of the light and the light pattern. Um, glass has been the original and traditional greenhouse glazing and but when you look at the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the overall production in the greenhouses we have uh, plastics uh, mainly dominate the, uh, the, uh, the selection for the greenhouse um, as, a, as a glazing material for the greenhouses and they have been around uh, more than 60 uh, years and the selection of course uh, is influenced by the greenhouse structures, the crops to be grown, the labor involved in terms of uh, uh, replacing and environmental impacts uh, also for fabrication and disposal of this materials. So these are some factors affecting the selection. I'd like to show you this graph to just to have an idea about the greenhouse coverings in the in the US. As you can see if we consider glass, rigid plastic, plastic film single or double and shade structures you can see the plastic films in this overall comparison is about uh, 50 percent and it's, uh, it's pretty stable between uh, uh, certain, certain years but when you consider, uh, when you exclude shade structures, you can see that uh, we have about 70 to 75 percent of our greenhouses covered with either single or double layer uh, plastics. Um, so greenhouse covering materials. Um, uh, we suggest that you work with um, a reliable manufacturer or, or a supplier and we have some of them here, so I encourage you to go and talk with them uh, in terms of the greenhouse uh, glazing. Once you have that connection, uh, communicating with a reli reliable manufacturer or supplier, that makes sure that you are getting the material with the desired qualities or the specs. For example, transmission, the light quality, the mechanical resistances or thermophysical properties, that ensures for you to uh, to purchase the right uh, material. After this is done, then you have you can ask uh, these uh, questions to yourself: How much energy enters the greenhouse? Because this is uh, important in terms of the light penetration and and how much cooling, for example, is needed. And how much energy leaves the greenhouse? How my what is the loss of heat from the greenhouse? And how the greenhouse glazing makes have an effect on that? So in terms of heat losses and then the cost, the purchase, installation, as well as the maintenance. Uh, then how well can the imposed climate with the selected glazing be controlled with the, uh, with the climate control system, uh, for example, or the experiences of the grower uh, for the desired quality and expected profit. So the, the questions A, B, and C uh, are, are related to the, to the physical properties of the material you can uh, pretty much discuss the uh, C with your supplier or manufacturer when it comes to question D. It's kind of a more complex uh, a question and it kind of, uh, it, has, it is affected by uh, several factors. The, uh, the climate control system, uh, the climate that you need to maintain, the growers uh, skills, so this is the, and the crop are being grown, these uh, all have an effect to respond to this question, the number D. Um, glass uh, is, is a good option, uh, providing high light uh, transmission. It is non-combustible. Uh, it's resistant to UV radiation. In order to have maximum light transmission, uh, you should go with larger uh, sizes, larger sheets of uh, glass uh, material, hopefully tempered uh, glass uh, for safety. Um, and but however they can be vulnerable to uh, to damage uh, by hail or, or storms as you can see this is a um, um, large-scale uh, commercial greenhouse operation uh, uh, recently it was affected by recently uh, by a hail a storm this so this might be the uh, kind of uh, negative or limitation of the glass um, 
we want high light transmission with glass. There are uh, mechanization uh, systems, automation systems to clean the glass um, uh, uh, if the glass uh, has dust and dirt and uh, that certain kind of uh, materials affecting the light uh, transmission. Polyethylene plastic, uh, flexible plastic films. Um, they are cheap. Uh, they're less co less costly, and um, installation is. Uh, is easy. Lifespan is somewhere between three and four years, uh, depending on what type of uh, uh, plastics you have, as well as the climate, of course. Um, uh, usually four mil, the size is four mil or six mil uh, thick material. Four mils are usually one year for uh, on narrow tunnels, or six mil for multi-year production settings is, is, uh, is more uh, commonly used. Um, these plastics might have some additives in them, for example, anti-fog or anti-drip uh, characteristics. These are wetting agents uh, integrated to the glazing, which kind of lessens or reduces the surface tension, so uh, the droplets have a tendency to flow rather than dripping on the canopy or on the surfaces. So this is an important, actually, uh, addition. We don't want to see those dripping on the canopy. It may lead to uh, disease uh, development or uh, um, those uh, negative uh, uh, things that you might see on the plant. Or the glazing might have also uh, infrared uh, blockers. Uh, these are uh, integrated to the um, glazing to prevent heat losses uh, 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 during the night or during the cold uh, period. Um, with double poly, um, uh, we, you can improve the, uh, the energy savings. Um, one of the limitations with double glazing might be uh, the condensation building up between the layers. Uh, if that's the case, it may uh, prevent uh, the light, uh, higher light transmission into the greenhouse. Uh, and when you see a condensation building up between the layers, uh, then this may also lead to algae uh, buildup. So we recommend uh, installing those uh, blowers uh, to inflate the uh, uh, layers, the plastic, uh, inside the greenhouse. However, to use the outside air to inflate the, the double layers. This would help preventing the condensation buildup because the greenhouse environment is usually, when it's cold outside, it's warm. It's humid, so if you use inside air, this may lead to condensation buildup, as you can see here. And, it, and if this is severe, then you may see really water building up inside the, uh, inside the um, inflated uh, layers. Uh, polycarbonate, it's carbonate material is easy to install. It can have a longer life uh, span, uh, 10 or more years, um, more stronger, much stronger than glass and it is lighter than glass. Um, it has good insulation uh, properties. Um, they're widely used as a covering, uh, for example, on the uh, gable ends or end, end walls. Um, we need to look at the degradation pattern uh, because we really would like to have uh, high light transmission. So as you can see, uh, uh, after uh, Certain amount of uh, uh, you know period, these could be uh, these materials could be degrading. So replacing those uh, uh, glazing material would be advantageous for light transmission. The acrylic uh, also easy uh, to install, good light transmission, good insulation properties. They are less flexible than polycarbonate, um, and they are more prone to hail damage compared to polycarbonate material. The lifespan could be longer than polycarbonate, 20 uh, or plus plus uh, years. This is another uh, plastic material available with certain uh, with good uh, physical properties. Uh, ETFE, ethylene tetrafluoroethylene, with high light transmission. Uh, uh, as if it is single layer, uh, closer to 95% light or double 90% uh, 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 light transmission has a higher resistance for UV radiation, and uh, they, it has a self-cleaning uh, property, uh, for example, surface not uh, accumulating or attracting dust, as well as uh, clearing the, the snow building up on the, 
on the frame. Of course, the material has a high cost to it, so you need to make a decision in terms of the cost and the benefits here when it comes to ETFE uh, glazing. So I'd like to also mention about uh, some of these properties because these are important factors for making a decision with uh, greenhouse uh, covering. So here we have the part transmittance. We really need to pay attention to part transmittance. We would like to have a glazing material which has a high par uh, transmission. Uh, for glass, you can see it's about 90% uh, polyethylene, uh, less than 80% polycarbonate and arcuate given wall. Infrared transmittance here is related to the amount of heat loss, the, uh, the, the, the property of the uh, glazing uh, when it comes to uh, infrared transmittance. As you can see, glass is kind of um, uh, opaque to um, infrared uh, transmittance. Uh, polyethylene has a high uh, infrared transmittance, about 50%, so we need to pay attention to the, the heat loss during the nighttime or during the cold period uh, with uh, polyethylene covering. Uh, UV transmittance uh, with glass, we have high UV uh, transmittance. Uh, polycarbonate is preventing or it can also prevent, uh, limit the, the whole uh, UV uh, radiation. So depending on the application and desired uh, objective here, uh, this may make a difference in terms of selecting the proper glazing material. And of course the durability with, among these uh, uh, coverings. Uh, thermal properties uh, with uh, covering materials, this is an important factor, the R value, the resistance against the heat uh, loss, uh, uh, especially with uh, heating uh, applications and the heat demands and heat loss, as you can see, the higher uh, uh, <coughs> The higher, this, the higher the value here, the R value, we have less heat loss from the greenhouse uh, environment. And the, the U value here is basically the reciprocal uh, or, of the uh, resistance or the R value for greenhouse glazing and it's called uh, overall heat transfer uh, coefficient. So when you're making a selection, uh, you can see you can make a judgment in terms of uh, which one of these are more important for your application. Um, Light transmission <clears throat> is an important uh, factor here and there are special uh, instrumentation and measurements to determine the, the light transmission with uh, glazing materials. These are integrating spheres and the companies use these type of instrumentation to look at the not only the perpendicular light transmission but also look at the hemispherical a light transmission because during the day the, the, the sun uh, changes its location so the hemispherical uh, transmittance uh, characteristic uh, and the value is more important when it comes to selecting a greenhouse glazing and as you can see uh, the value between perpendicular transmission for photosynthetic active radiation versus hemispherical uh, photosynthetic active radiation uh, is transmission is as different uh, for a given or selected glazing material here for the glass and, and another uh, comparison here you can see for the uh, plastic uh, glazing. The sun um, comes in as a, can, it, it can come as a direct uh, radiation or as a diffuse uh, uh, radiation. Um, in the case of diffuse radiation, this is the light uh, scattered from uh, different uh, different ob uh, different objects and penetrating into the uh, or structural elements penetrating into the greenhouse and reaching to the uh, to the canopy. Um, the the light distribution uh, under direct or diffuse light is is different. When you have a more direct light penetrating into the greenhouse and reaching to the canopy because of structural components. Uh, you may you may see uh, shadows uh, at certain uh, places in the canopy. However, under diffuse radiation, since it is coming, it's being scattered from all directions. The light has more capability to penetrate deeper into the uh, canopy. So you can see also how the shading is uh, is uh, prevented under diffuse glazing. So using diffuse glazing material can be advantageous in terms of providing more uh, even distribution, horizontal distribution of the light, uh, lower risk of light saturation under direct light conditions, highlight conditions, plants may reach to 
uh, saturation uh, uh, condition uh, and deeper uh, light penetration so the photosynthesis can be uh, improved uh, the efficiency of photosynthetic activity can be improved under diffuse light conditions and also uh, a softer microclimate can be achieved under diffuse glazing. Some benefits have, uh, have been shown uh, growing crops under diffuse light conditions. Uh, the data is usually available from research from uh, uh, low light and highly diffuse uh, climatic conditions. We have some, we have uh, uh, no data or very limited data uh, for, the, for showing the benefits of diffuse lighting under high light or high direct light uh, conditions or, or the climate. So there is actually a little bit more research needed to show the benefits under, uh, under climates where we have more direct uh, light. So you may see these terminology used for the glazing. Uh, for example, haze, diffuse, total transmittance. So I just wanted to show this uh, uh, slide uh, for you. So the total transmittance actually can be divided into two components here, direct transmittance or diffuse transmittance. And the diffuse transmittance uh, uh, is classified into two, uh, wide angle scattering or narrow uh, angle scattering. If it is wide angle scattering, then that property is, is basically the haze and the clarity is basically the light scattering uh, under narrow uh, angles. And you can see the effect under haze. When you are talking about haze, we talk about the loss of the contrast while clarity means actually the see-through quality uh, when it comes to the, um, the perception. Um, as I mentioned to you, uh, the effect of haze or uh, diffuse glazing might be better under high light condition, high direct light conditions, for example, in arid and semi-arid conditions. This table is actually comparing the the amount of percentage of diffuse light here in Netherlands conditions, I believe, uh, the numbers here are somewhere from 65 to 70 percent from winter to summer conditions. So during the year, throughout the year, actually, the climatic conditions are more diffuse compared to Tucson conditions. Here, as you can see, we have high direct light conditions as low as 13, 10 percent, 13 percent, up to 28, 30 percent throughout the, throughout the um, uh, year. So having a diffuse lighting might actually uh, have some benefits, positives under uh, uh, our climate and similar climates. Uh, UV transparency property is important. Um, if the plants are needing uh, UV light for, uh, for color, for example, if you're growing salad, uh, leafy crops and some uh, flowers and flowering pot plants, UV light might be important. If you want to enhance phytochemical content, uh, the UV light might be important. Uh, plants needing hardening. Um, if you want to grow plants uh, in a more compact way, bedding plants or some pot plants, so the UV light might be important. And also, if you are growing a crop where you are using uh, bees, uh, bumblebees, uh, for pollination, uh, the UV light is also important. That's how the bees can actually find their way, their route in the uh, greenhouse. Uh, environment. Um, uh, uh, for example, with uh, polycarbonate, as you can see here, the UV light is basically uh, a cut. So if you're really wanting to grow something that needs UV light and you want UV light, uh, you may want to consider reconsider that uh, glazing. Um, uh, reflection is also an important uh, feature. So we want to have less reflection from the glazing. So there are certain uh, additives or materials that can be integrated to the glazing to reduce the reflection uh, or having anti-reflection properties to improve the light transmission with the glazing material. Um, in order to prevent highlight uh, transmission in the, in the greenhouse during the uh, warm season, uh, you can uh, consider using uh, shade curtains. These could be deployed inside the greenhouse or they can be deployed outside the greenhouse to prevent the light being transmitted into the greenhouse um, and um, prevent uh, heat build up to, to kind of uh, reduce the pressure on the cooling demand. Um, there are also coating uh, agents or whitewash is an alternative to uh, apply on the glazing to 
uh, 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 control the light penetration during the um, during the uh, warm uh, season. The near infrared radiation uh, uh, will increase the greenhouse temperature as well as the plant temperature uh, during the uh, warm uh, periods <clears throat> as well as during the winter periods. So. Uh, you may also uh, consider uh, preventing uh, or reflecting uh, the near infrared uh, radiation to save from the cooling uh, uh, energy, energy that goes for cooling. Um, the, the NIR uh, uh, could be reflected or could be absorbed uh, with the within the glazing. Um, of course, NIR is not desired during the warm period or summer conditions, but it is a desirable, uh, actually, uh, uh, wavelength that we would like to have, light penetrating in this wavelength during the winter period to save from the heating. So a balance or a consideration must be given in terms of the plant, the crop needs, and the location to make a decision on, decision on preventing the near infrared radiation. Uh, there are uh, glazing materials where you have this near infrared uh, blocking capability or reflecting capability is integrated, or there are agents that you can spray on the glazing to prevent uh, near infrared radiation uh, during the summer period, or it can be removed during the winter period to have that control on the light transmission. Um, there are, oh, there's also interest growing uh, there, uh, in terms of agrivoltaics combining food uh, production with energy production um, to integrate photovoltaics into greenhouse uh, uh, as, a, as a glazing material. You may think that this is yes, this is counterintuitive uh, integrating a material on top of the glazing where you really want a more light penetration into the greenhouse. However, for certain crops, certain locations, climate conditions, or applications, this may be an alternative to consider. There are different ways of integrating solar PVs into the greenhouse systems. Uh, traditional opaque uh, PV uh, options or semi-transparent photovoltaic uh, panels or uh, uh, selective wavelength, selective uh, luminescent uh, solar collector type of glazing is also available uh, uh, to bring the light or shifting the light uh, 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 spectrum of light uh, for certain crops and for certain applications. However, when it comes to photovoltaics applications, um, uh, we really need to strategically think about the, uh, the crop, the varieties uh, uh, considered as well as the crop management and maybe considering partial covering with photovoltaics, again balancing the food production as well as power production and consider maybe alternative glazing where we, we can maybe diffuse the light and prevent the effect of shading that would be uh, seen under the photovoltaics integrated uh, 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 greenhouse glazing uh, options. And always, uh, you know, the focus should be on the resource use efficiency. How much yield we are receiving per given amount of resources used. So we might be affecting the plant growth and yield a little bit, but on the other hand, we might be reducing the energy use uh, with certain applications. So the focus should be on not just on the yield, but uh, on resource use efficiency. So I believe this is my last slide. So I just wanted to share with you some information about general greenhouse structures and and the glazing alternatives uh, and how that relates to the light lighting conditions in the greenhouse environment. And with that, thank, thank you. Thank you, Murat. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it.